Hi everyone, and welcome back. Last week, when we began our discussion on infinite series, we saw this very famous example, the harmonic series. This is the sum of reciprocals of natural numbers, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, and so on. We showed that this series diverges, right? And we did so by analyzing its sequence of partial sums. The partial sums just got bigger and bigger and bigger without bound. Later in the week, we actually saw a second proof of this fact using the integral test. And in fact, if you do a little bit of Googling, you'll realize that there are literally dozens of proofs that this series diverges. It's a very, very famous example. For today's lesson, however, I'd like to begin by looking at a related series, the alternating harmonic series. Rather than simply adding the reciprocals of natural numbers, we're going to let the signs flip between plus and minus. So we have one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter and so on. This sign flipping business is achieved by a term like this, minus one to the k or minus one to the k minus one. It flips between plus and minus one. The question is, does this new series converge or diverge? Well, it's not completely obvious. On the one hand, this series is very closely related to the harmonic series, which is divergent. So maybe this series diverges as well. On the other hand, not all of the terms in this series are added. Some are subtracted. Maybe having the negative terms in there helps to keep the partial sums under control. Maybe they don't blow up to infinity like they did before. It's not completely clear. What's even worse is that our existing library of convergence tests won't be of much help here. I mean, let's think about it. Aside from the geometric series test and the test for divergence, all of our other tests require the terms of our series to be positive. So they won't apply to the alternating harmonic series. Ugh, oh, so what do we do? Well, if none of our existing tests will help us handle this series, we gotta come up with a new test. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this lesson. We're going to see the alternating series test, which will help us to handle series of this form, where the signs flip between plus and minus. Well, here it is, folks, the alternating series test. Suppose that you're trying to add up the terms in this alternating series b0 minus b1 plus b2 minus b3, and so on. Here, the bk's represent positive numbers. It's the signs in front of them that make the series alternate. The test tells you that if the following two conditions are met, your alternating series will converge. The first condition is that the terms b0, b1, b2, and so on form a decreasing sequence. They get smaller and smaller and smaller. Really, as long as the terms are eventually decreasing, that's good enough. Secondly, your terms should tend to zero. If both of these conditions are met, your series converges. And that's the whole test. As you'll see in the examples to follow, checking conditions 1 and 2 is usually pretty quick, which makes the alternating series test nice and easy to apply in practice. Before jumping into examples, however, it's important to acknowledge what this test does not say. If we have a series where one or both of these conditions fails, we can't draw any conclusions from the alternating series test alone. Okay, if the second condition fails, then the terms aren't going to zero, and hence we can apply our test for divergence to conclude that this series diverges. If, however, we have an alternating series where this sequence BK is not decreasing, we can't draw any conclusions without doing further tests. The series could converge, or it could diverge. Okay, here I have three examples where I'm going to attempt to apply my alternating series test. You can see that in each case we have a term that looks like minus 1 with an exponent that depends on k. Now not all alternating series will be written in this way, but when you see something like this, this is a telltale sign that the alternating series test might be helpful. Starting with example 1, we have the alternating harmonic series. You can see that the signs are switching between plus and minus. But if I ignore those sign switches, I get terms bk equals 1 over k. Now what do we have to check? If we want to apply the alternating series test, we have to make sure that these terms are decreasing and tend to zero. Well here, this is going to be the case. My sequence 1 over k is definitely decreasing, and as k goes off to infinity, 1 over k tends to zero. So there you have it. We've checked both conditions from the alternating series test. By the AST, this series converges. Feels almost too good to be true, doesn't it? But believe it, it works. 
Sometimes applying the AST really is that easy. On to example two. Here we're adding up the terms minus one to the k times sine of pi over k. That's sine of pi over two minus sine of pi over three plus sine of pi over four and so on. Now notice that all of these angles, pi over two, pi over three, pi over four, etc., those all lie within quadrant one. So if we ignore the plus minus plus minus, these terms sine of pi over k, these really are positive terms. So we have an alternating series. Here bk is sine of pi over k. To apply the alternating series test, we need to confirm that this sequence is decreasing and tends to zero. But that's going to turn out to be the case. As you let the value of k increase, this angle pi over k gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And since we're working in quadrant one, sine of that angle is also getting smaller. So my sequence really is decreasing. When I let k go off to infinity, what I end up with is sine of zero, which is zero. So sure enough, the terms go to zero. By the alternating series test, the series converges. Again, it really is that simple. Okay, one more example. We have the sum from one to infinity of minus one to the k e to the one over k. That's minus e plus e to the half, minus e to the third, plus e to the quarter, and so on. Notice that the terms really do alternate. e to any power is going to be positive, and then we have minus plus, minus plus, etc. Okay, great, we have an alternating series. So I'm gonna to try to apply my alternating series test. If I ignore the pluses and minuses that you see here, I can get a sequence bk of positive terms, e to the one over k. The question is, does this sequence decrease and does it tend to zero? Well, it certainly decreases, right? As I let k get bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm taking bigger and bigger roots of the number e. Those will get smaller. So yeah, my sequence is decreasing. What about my second condition? Do my terms converge to zero? No. As I let k go off to infinity, my terms approach e to the zero, which is one. Ah, so my alternating series test doesn't apply, but my test for divergence sure does. According to this test, since the terms of the series don't go to zero, the series itself is divergent. I'm going to end this video by giving you a little intuition for why the alternating series test works. So suppose that we have the same setup as in the statement of this test. We have an alternating series, b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4, and so on, where the terms bk are positive, decreasing, and tend to zero. I'm going to draw a little picture here of the partial sums of our series, and I think you'll see as we take more and more partial sums, we're actually going to approach something finite. So let's say that we start at zero and we add our first term b1. That's going to move us somewhere to the right, maybe over here. Next, we subtract b2, but wait a second, b2 is smaller than b1, so I don't move all the way back to zero, I maybe stop about here. Next, I add b3, which moves me back toward the right, but since b3 is less than b2, I don't go all the way back to the right, maybe I'll stop here. I continue this process. I'm going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, but since my terms are decreasing, I never move as far back as I was before. Finally, since our terms are tending to zero, the changes we see at each stage are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This means that our partial sums are really honing in on some finite value. The limit of the partial sums exists, and it's finite, and therefore our series converges.